Hello, I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program, and this is Mature Living. We hope you're doing well these days and staying healthy because all of us are doing the same thing. And so we come to you virtually, of course, from our from our homes, from our abodes. But we want to continue sharing with you what El Paso Community College and our Senior Adult Program and what we're offering this semester, this spring semester. Uh, classes have already started, so but there's still time to join some of our classes that are starting a little later. And one of them, and I have a special guest, one of our instructors, I love Philip Romero. He's just a super duper instructor that engages with his students and he's teaching two new classes. Now, there's still room in the classes and I wanna say, hi, Philip, how are you doing? Hi, Mary, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. And we hope to recruit some great students for you. I know they're going to love you once they get into class. And so uh, just tell me, how long have you been working with our senior adult program, but actually also with senior citizens? Because throughout the years, you've worked in many uh, aspects throughout the community, many programs. Yes, ma'am, that is true. Uh, I have been working with uh, senior citizens for many years now. Uh, I was working at one of the local art museums, and we did art classes for seniors, which we can 55 and above uh, to be uh, uh, senior adults in our community. And uh, it's been over four years that I've been teaching there and also through EPCC at the veterans on the, the, the mm. veterans or in the Northeast. Like, gosh, it's been so long. I can't It's at Ambrosio Guillen veterans home. Yes, home yes. Veterans. Yeah. The at, state home. At the state home. Yes. And my veterans, uh, my senior veterans over there, uh, and they just enjoyed having me come by once a week and we would have a little ceramics art class, having fun, working with our hands, building our muscles up. You know, a lot of people don't always recognize the benefits of working with clay. It's, you know, I always tell people when you're working with clay, you're just playing in the mud. And <laughs> yeah, we, I love it. We have a lot of fun, but you know, we don't recognize the benefits of, of, of working with our hands our fingers, our carpals here, our wrists, and just having to work with this, uh, you know, with our seniors, it's a, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of benefit. Um, and I just like to make jokes and I like to make my students feel comfortable and happy all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. What two classes are you teaching this semester that people can register for now? So this semester, I'll be working with a beginning ceramics class, which I think they call it uh, uh, clay making. Clay making. And in leather working class. And so let me tell you a little bit about that. When I had the class before the global pandemic hit, we worked with professional grade clay and I would fire the work for them. But because we're gonna do this class virtually through our laptops or our phones, however we, whatever platform we exactly use, um, I'm gonna be using air dry clay just so we can get uh, our habits built up, our, our our muscles built up, so we can learn how to make fun and simple items on, on a weekly basis. And it'll be air dry clay. It will not have to be fired. You just let it dry. However, let, let me tell you, for those of you that get excited about ceramics, when we use the air dry clay, it will not be functional. I'm letting you know right up front. It's not going to be functional for food, for food or drink. You can use it to put your keys or decorations and fun stuff that we can use, but you cannot use it for food. Um, and the other class is gonna be a fun beginning leatherworking class. And we're gonna start off making some fun things, uh, key fobs, bracelets, eventually we'll get to a belt and a wallet. And all of, and, and, and uh, these are kits that you can pick up at a local vendor uh, called Tandy Leather here in El Paso. And they always have these things in, in supply. Uh, and this is how we're going to manage this class is where I'll give you a heads up the week before. Next week, we'll be making this kit. Go to Tandy Leather, pick up, you know, uh, kit number XYZ. And then you can go down to Tandy, pick up the kit. And then we'll, we'll, we'll work it here in class. And I'll have a camera set up like this in front of me. And I'll have a special camera on the side where you can see my hands work up close and I'll show you how to do the hand stitching and the leather work. And we can do the leather um, dyeing where we change the color of the leather. Uh, if you want to, we can go into the stamping and where you can put your initials into the leather. Really fun and easy work that, that, that 
we're going to take away the stigma that you can't. We can make ceramics. We can do leather work. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. It's going to be a short one-hour class uh, with, that will meet twice a week. Now, the thing that I want to mention to people is that I've had some people say, I really want to take this online class, but I work in the afternoon. But what we'll do is we're going to record the classes yeah. and then come back and watch the video. But let's say you get off at 5. So you get home at, and at 6 o'clock, you watch a little video. And if you want to text me at 6 o'clock, I'm happy to. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That is so good. And, you know, because we're all working from home, taking classes from home, having meetings from home, we're getting used to this virtual. We're using Teams, Microsoft Teams. All of our instructors are online. And so you can register by calling us. And I'm going to give the number now because this is kind of, uh, if people are getting excited about the, 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 uh, the clay making, you have an example of the clay that people will buy, but they can call 831-7801. And we give them more information. We make sure they're registered. All you have to do is be 55 years or older, and you can be with Philip in his class. You're going to have a lot of fun. Or you can email us at sap at epcc.edu. Philip, you know, there are so many more questions that 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 I like to uh, ask you, and one of them is, what? Why do you choose to work with elders? What what kinds of interaction do you have? Because you're a young guy, and you know, well, you look young anyway. So, <laughs> Barry, but, I love I love to help people. I love to help people and talk to people, communicate. I love the joining of spirits. And I, I love to work with children, with little ones, and, 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 the, and the middle schoolers, and the high schoolers, and the young adults, and the adults, and my seniors. But why do I love to work with my seniors so much? Is because this is a population that they feel that they have been forgotten. And it's very important that we care for our elders and remind them that they're not forgotten. It's time that we remind our community that our elders need to be taken care of. And all I'm trying to do is remind my seniors that they're not forgotten, that they have a world of knowledge to offer me. So I'm really cheating. I'm not giving them a class. I'm looking for a class in them because they always tell me some story. I remember when. Uh, but I've been told by my seniors that I'm an old soul. So maybe that's why I get along with them so well. One day in my studio, I started to play. I think it was I was listening to The Doors. And one of my senior gentlemen, he, he didn't really get upset. He says to me, what the hell are you doing? Listen to the doors. You're too young for that. And I said, sir, I love this music. And he goes, okay, I'll let, I'll, I'll let you play it. Thank you. <laughs> so you have a little background music, you know, sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, and, 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 you know, my crowd, my people, I can, I, I, I play anything from Frank Sinatra to the doors, the Rolling Stones, 70s, 80s, whatever they want to listen to, because music is important, I believe. And um, my favorite is rock and roll. Rock. <laughs> rock and roll from the 50s, 60s, you know, it's like, oh, you know, it makes me young. It makes me think back of when I was young. Mary, don't forget, February, uh, February 3rd is just around the corner. You know, yes. we do February 3rd, the day the music died. <sighs> Balance, a big bopper, the plane crash. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh. So what I'm, what I'm trying to show you here is I do have an ability to connect with all of my students. I, I have a, a head filled with useless information, and it only comes out when I speak to my seniors, and I love I love helping them and reminding them, uh, reminding how important you are. That is so cool. Well, we talk, I'm going to do a quick demo, but let's keep talking. But I want to show and this box is a... 10 pound box of clay uh, and you can get it at Hobby Lobby for $10. And so while we talk, I'm gonna do a little demo for you. So what is your next question that I can answer for you? Well, just how have you been dealing with COVID is, a, is kind of a, a question that everybody's asking. I, I realize your hair may have grown. You've got a bigger ponytail or, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe you're, there you go. Oh my goodness. My hair has grown. I haven't been able to get a haircut in a year, but most of my students know that I usually kept my hair pretty long anyways. I've been trying to keep my beard trimmed so I don't look like a homeless man. <laughs> yeah. And so 
it's been very difficult this year trying to be respectful and responsible uh, and, and keep my mouth covered and wash my hands more than usual because when you play with clay, you have to wash your hands a lot. Yeah. But disinfect and using alcohol on my hands and staying away from people. And it's been rough for me, Mary, because I love talking to people. I love helping people, but I haven't, you know, and then I don't want to offend anybody by walking up to them and giving them a hug because, hey, I haven't seen you. I miss you. <laughs> One day we'll get back to hugs again and in yeah. person. And we, we, I wanted to mention while you're uh, working with your hands right now, uh, uh, and we can't see your hands, but uh, but when you teach, they will be able to see your hands because you're going right. to have two cameras. So for now, virtual classes, uh, but in the future, uh, I do, I am creating a little studio space in my home, and you know, you will see how it goes. I'll be able to invite some students here. Uh, through our EPCC courses, and maybe we'll have many classes uh, in my personal home studio, which I'm happy to invite the community to join us. Very good. And you know, tell me about the, th uh, we have about a minute left, but tell me about the ther therapeutic aspects of clay making. So when you see my hands working, I'm, I'm can you holding, Can you raise it up a little more? I can see. Yeah. I'm, I'm holding it up, and if you can see my hand here, these are my carpals that I'm stretching, and here's my hand laying out, and I'm using my pinching fingers to pinch the clay because uh -huh. it's very soft. Uh, this is good for your fingers. Yes. It's good for your hand. It's good yeah. for your, your carpals. So yeah. we keep muscles going. And, you know, a lot of people talk about their hands hurting. This is a really good exercise. The benefit is, is countless because you can always work your hands. It's not... Just to make it look here. Philip, I may register for your class because I have trouble opening bottles. That means I don't have enough strength in my hands to mm -hmm. open bottles anymore. Even the milk carton, which is so important. I love milk and I have hard time opening that milk, uh, you know, gallon. And so would it be helpful for me to take your class? I promise you it will be helpful. Very good. So I want to lastly thank you for being with us. I, I want everybody to know you can register for the clay making class with Philip Romero, our instructor. Uh, very experienced, very talented and very funny. Uh, I want to say he's got a beautiful personality. And then I also want to encourage you to take the uh, the leather working class, which would be really nice for our male students, you know, uh, I know you can have a lot of fun with them. And of course, you do it because you benefit from being around our elders. They they share a lot of wisdom while they're working. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it doesn't matter that you're home. You're connecting. You'll be able to see your students. They'll be able to see you. Uh, you'll have two cameras. They'll be able to see what you're doing with your hands. So I encourage everybody to uh, call that 831-7801 number and tell us. I want to join Philip uh, Romero's classes, both of them, you know, you one go. is one day and another. So thank you so much, Philip. We thank hope you get a lot. We get a lot of calls because we want these classes to make and yes. so therapeutic and so helpful during this time. Don't don't stay home and be isolated. Uh, you know, join Philip's class. Thank you, Philip. We'll see you then thank in you, class. Mary. OK, well, thank you for staying with us. We want to continue this show promoting our classes with our senior adult program. Of course, I'm Mary Yanez, director of the program, and we love featuring our instructors and our classes because we certainly want these classes to make. There are no tuition, there's no tuition fee for the classes, and the classes are for persons 55 years and older, which is mature living. Hopefully you'll be watching our show, and this show is exactly for you. So we want to introduce you to our one of our new instructors, Ricardo Valencia, who teaches guitar, and he has a, a really interesting class. Um, and and uh, and his class is has got a kind of a cute title. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read the title of of, uh, of his class. It says, "Getting to Know the Guitar." You know, many of us don't know what the parts of the guitar are. He's already started his class, but you can still register. And I never knew what these parts were called. And not just to grab a guitar and start playing. 
you really need to know and get to know your guitar, your instrument. So welcome. How are you, Ricardo Valencia? I, I see you from I'm your home. Great, yes, thank How are you? you very much. I'm doing great. Everything is great. Thank God. Good. OK, I know you've already started classes, but we want more students to join your class. There's plenty of room. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, how did you find out about our program and wanted to teach for a program? I know that you could teach in person, but we haven't been able to teach in person since March. Uh, and uh, and now that you've started teaching online, what has that experience been like as you started working with our senior adult program? It's been magnificent. I'm loving it. Um, we have done this only for two weeks now. Uh, the first week was only talking about exactly about the, the parts of the guitar. We need to um, relate to the same language. So we are talking about the same thing in the same manner. When I explain something, it's important that we know exactly where it is, what is that we're talking about, where is high, where is low. What, some people consider this going down. But in music, this is going up oh. and this is coming down. So making a, a, an image of how the instrument works has been taking a little bit of time. It took us about two hours to go over every single part of the guitar and understanding the frets, how they work, how the strings are organized, the notes. But uh, yesterday, for the first time ever, two of the students started playing melodies in two weeks, in two wow. lessons. It was beautiful. I was very excited. I didn't want to show my excitement too much. It was it was a very good experience. Very uh, good. And and we celebrate every time we learn something new. And every and you sell teachers celebrate every time their students are progressing and they're learning and you celebrate with them, you know, and of course those that maybe take a little longer uh, to uh, to learn, it's okay too. It's you know, a little bit self-paced, no pressure. Yes, very important. If you are uh, planning to learn any instrument, you're gonna be using 101% of your patience. It's very important you know you are going to be using a lot of patience. It's important that you relax and do this as easy as possible. This is not a challenge. This is uh, something you, you have to enjoy. You're going to enjoy once you know what you're doing. It's just a small process of us understanding where is what and how to read and how to understand, coordinating the fingers of each hand, one with each other. That, take, that is a process. So my only advice always is be very relaxed, do things as easy as possible, and be patient. You know, many um, of our seniors, that, yes, many of our seniors that are taking our classes uh, uh, know Spanish only or understand Spanish a little more than English. Do you do a bilingual class? Do you talk also and explain in Spanish as you do in English? I haven't had the chance I haven't needed to do uh, an explanation in Spanish but uh, my first degree in music is in Mexico City so I can explain you can do it completely. not a problem and, uh, and my my uh, my last degree was here in UTEP in English so it's not a problem either English or Spanish easy not not a problem as very as we're all speaking uh, music <laughs> you know I, I i it kind of brings up a question that i'd like to ask to get to know our instructors and for the community to get to know you uh, tell me a little bit about yourself you mentioned mexico city where where you uh you know probably uh lived and also your education tell me a little bit about yourself originally from mexico city born and raised i started studying keyboards at nine years old and at 14, I started studying guitar and voice and harmony and all those beautiful things. And then I came to UTEP at 26. I did a, a music theory and composition, electronic music production. And, uh, and now I've been studying uh, music recording as a sound engineer. Um, and now I'm teaching here. It's, uh, wow. 
more or less what I've been doing for these past 35 years. You know, and our senior citizens are so fortunate to have a talented, well-prepared instructor that is, 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 is willing to, to take time and to teach, uh, you know, from, from all your experiences uh, using your right brain, left brain uh, uh, learning. I see you have a keyboard. Uh, we're always looking for a chorus instructor as well. And so you might, because you've learned also voice, uh, what a wonderful uh, chorus instructor you would make as well. So we're going to keep you busy, uh, Ricardo. We're going to keep you busy. In the summer, we hope to open up more classes, maybe 50 or so classes. Right now, we have about 27 for the spring semester. But we certainly want you to uh, continue working with us. Uh, tell me, what will uh, your students learn? And, uh, and, and of course, only in the first two weeks, you've already had a couple of students that are already playing a melody. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't have a music mind. Uh, I sing along, but I don't know where my voice is going. <laughs> and I can't, I can't read music. Uh, and I, and so I admire anybody that knows music, plays any instrument, whatever instrument. I just admire musicians and people that have that innate learning. I told them yesterday, um, this last piece I'm, I'm going to show you, it's going to be in the test. So this is something you really need to sit down and practice. I'm going to ask you to practice from 15 to 30 minutes every day. Every day. Minutes to remember, 15 minutes to practice. And I told them, this is, I'm going to tell you two things. This is a very difficult thing, moving from one string to another. The distance between strings, it's a distance we need to calculate with lots of patience and get used to it. But now I told you it's very difficult and you may believe me. So now I'm going to tell you it's super simple. No. It is super simple. And as soon as I told them that their face has changed. And I'm telling you, it really depends on how you look at it. Always look at it as is the simplest thing it is there is in the world, in life, in, in every instrument. It's going to be simple and you're going to learn it faster. You're going to learn it better. So I think it's it's working. It's working very, very, very uh, good for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. I had the chance to teach in, in several high schools here in El Paso. And the last one I did was Isleta High about 10 years ago. And one time one of the students asked me, um, Mr. How do you? what did you do? How did you learn to be such a good teacher? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it moved me. And at the same time, it made me realize what did it take for me to get here? And honestly, I told him, it's a lot of practice to learn what you know. And it's a lot of practice to explain what you know. Yes. But then it also takes a bunch of really bad teachers to know <laughs> what not to do, <laughs> where not to go, how not to do things. So it's experience in every possible way, good and bad. And um, and now I use that a lot. My, my son Diego, he's a trumpet player and piano player. And now he's starting with guitar too. And, uh, and he told me that, have you ever realized how easy it is for you to explain things? But honestly, I start moving the gear hours before I start explaining something and I tried to find a way how would it be easier for me to understand it that helps a lot and um, I don't think there is an age I was talking to my mom this morning uh, she's 79 she's going to be 80 this year and I asked her would you ever consider learning to play the guitar my dad is a musician she's always lived around music and, and musicians and uh, and she's like, no, never. But my mom has a beautiful voice. It has almost perfect pitch. And I told her, you know what? I think it would be very simple for you because when you listen to music that much, it also makes it easier for you to understand where you're going and when you're making a mistake. Super, super, uh, uh, it's, it's a very good practice for the ear and the brain to realize where the right notes are, where the wrong notes are. So listening to music also helps a lot. Very good. We'd love to have her as one of our students. 
I don't, I don't know if she lives here, but you know, we can enroll her in a second and she can join all of us that, that, that are learning new things. And you know what, uh, you know, that is a beautiful compliment your son gave you. Uh, how did you learn how to teach play guitar? Not everybody can teach. A lot of people can play, but not everybody can explain how to play, how to learn to play, how to use a guitar because you're using the instrument, you're using it. And, and, uh, you know, it's a very beautiful compliment that your son gave you. And, um, uh, hopefully your mom will join your class. We'd love to welcome her. Uh, and many other people that are watching this show today, hey, anybody can learn anything. And you know what it is, I think about you, Mr. Uh, Valencia, is your patience. I can hear it in your voice, in in the in the in the uh, pitch. I can hear it in the in the. Uh, you're you're not speeding up your words. You're explaining very slowly, and seniors like that. Seniors like people to explain very carefully, very slowly, and repetitiously uh, to learn to to do things in our classes anyway. That 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 has helped a lot. I I can see their faces. I can see their eyes when they are struggling with the speed or with the the movement of the of the fingers, whether it's left or right hand. I can see I can see reactions and. Uh, and I slow it down, and then I bring it back up speed-wise, and then they're there. And uh, I mentioned it to them yesterday, and I told them, it took us about an hour and a half to work three notes on the first string. And then I said, you need to do the second string, and here's the speed, one, two, three, four. And they started, they were not <clears throat> expecting it to do it by themselves, and still they did it. I just wanted them to realize once you understand something in music, it becomes easier and easier and easier for yeah. you to do it by yourself. Very good. I just want to say, because we're running out of time, you're going to play something for us. Um, Tuesdays is your class in the evening, 6.30 to 8.30, which is great for working people. And so people can register uh, for your class and it's called Getting to Know the Guitar. Can you play for us as we... Uh, finish out this show. Thank you, Mr. Valencia. Please remember the class is free. So yes. Go ahead, everybody. Mm -hmm. 